Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. We are continuing with our Angular 9 full tutorial series and in today's episode, we are going to learn about Router Outlet. What is Router Outlet? How do we use it? What are the different types of it? Can we use multiple Router Outlets? If yes, how? All these questions we are going to answer. Welcome back, my name is Sridhar. I have over 10 years of experience as a full stack developer. I am here to share my knowledge on the modern technologies with you. I'm also here to learn from you all. So during the course of this tutorial series, if you have any doubts, any queries, please drop them in the comment section. I will be happy to help you. I'm putting in a lot of hard work in compiling these tutorials for you. So I'll really appreciate if you can support me by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thank you in advance. I have created a playlist for you on Angular 9 full tutorial series. It has over 30 plus tutorials so far and I'm adding more. So make sure you go through all of the tutorials to master Angular 9. Angular routing itself requires a dedicated set of tutorials like around I'm going to bring along 17, 18 tutorials for you to completely master and learn Angular routing. The links are in the description box, so please go through to understand and master Angular routing. So far, we have studied about routing introduction, different types of routing strategies. We have learned about base HREF. We have learned about router module. And in today's episode, we are going to learn about router outlet. So what is router outlet? A router outlet is a directive from router module where it will tell that the dynamic content will come and load inside that particular uh, directive. To give you an example, Angular is a single page application, which means we will have only one HTML file. So the content renders dynamically and comes and loads inside the router outlet dynamically. So when we configure routes, we will point them to components, right? So whenever we click on a particular route, it is pointing to a component. The output of the component comes and play, gets placed dynamically inside the router outlet directive. We will see that in hands-on examples now. But first, now the question is, how many router outlets can we have in our application? We can have one or more than one. So the first question is, by default, Angular comes with a single router outlet. OK, it's found in your app component dot uh, HTML file. Let's see that. So this is your application. Go to app component dot HTML. You will see that there is one router outlet by default. Right. So this is where the content will come and load dynamically inside it. You don't have any more HTML files. You have only one HTML file, which is index.html, right? So whatever is the output of any component will come and get dynamically loaded inside the router outlet. But we can have multiple outlets because the components can have different states and different requirements. That is what we call it as auxiliary routes. But we will cover them when we learn about the child routes. For now, just understand that router outlet helps us define where the output should be displayed. The router outlet uh, can be specified in app component and can be wrapped around with DIVs, classes, etc. So how exactly do we do that? Let's see that now in a hands-on example. So open app component.html. This is your router outlet. Now we can wrap it inside a class. So I have a DIV. I'm placing the router outlet inside it. This is totally fine because here we can mention whatever directive we want, however we want. So there is no restriction to it. We can have any number of router outlets with for each specified DIVs. Now, 
to, I'm going to show you a quick example of it. So open app routing module and here you see I've created just a simple route. We are going to learn how to configure these routes in the next tutorial. For now, just follow along. Here I have added a path and I'm given a path as learning, right? So here I'm saying that this component should go, the output of this component should go and load it inside the router outlet. So whenever we launch the URL slash learning, the component that will be invoked is tasks in this case. And whatever is the output of that component will come and reside inside the router outlet. Let's see that in action. So here I have localhost 4200. I'm saying slash learning. So you see the path now, the route is slash learning. And this is the output from the task component dot HTML, right? So this is the route, this is the component. If you see, this has been loaded dynamically inside the app component dot HTML. What if we don't have that route? So I have removed this directive, right? What happens now? There is no output because it doesn't know where to, though it is, the route is there, it doesn't know where to display the output. So router outlet is used to display the data dynamically from the routes that we get. So in this case now, if you see, we will get the output, which is list of to do tasks for slash learning, right? So this is how router outlet behaves. Now, similarly, we can have multiple routes. We can have multiple routes here, all of which whenever we invoke the route, the output will come and get displayed dynamically inside the router outlet. That is the importance of router outlet. And that is how this whole router outlet operates. I hope you are clear with the concept of router outlet and I hope that um, now your concepts are clear you can you can we can start proceeding with creating our routes getting into advanced concepts so in the next section we are going to learn about creating routes creating components configuring the routes if you have any doubts please drop them in the comment section below I will be happy to help you thank you so much for joining Hope you like this video and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.